Over the holidays, SANS put on their annual Holiday Hack Challenge CTF. One of the challenges was an HTML5 game with a pretty straightforward solution, but I thought it would make an interesting platform to demonstrate some hacking techniques and write a cool cheat. Now, this game had you find a teammate and defeat Santa and the elves in a snowball fight in order to complete the objective. The easiest way to do this was just to create a private match from the main menu, send a invite code to one of your friends, and play together until you won. The game won't actually start until you have a second player join you, However, the hints for the game indicate that there might be a way to play single player, and by hacking on the URL variables, you're able to change the mode to single player and then have a AI teammate join. It would be much more fun to beat the game using cheats, and I decided to see how far we can push this. The first thing I did was use this little snippet of code to dump all the variables in scope. There are lots of interesting ones here, like player throw, player, all elves, etc. We can take a look at all of the keys in our player object by typing player into the console. Scrolling through, we can see all the local variables associated with our player. One that really stands out is this take hit function, which appears to be a callback triggered when a snowball hits us. We can override this function with something that has an empty function body. That way, when the callback is triggered, nothing actually takes place, and our player health won't be decremented, essentially giving us god mode. Next up, let's revisit that all elves variable that we saw earlier. Taking a look at it, we can see that this is actually an object that holds a reference to each of the elves in the game. Again, looking through all the elves variables, one that really seems to stand out immediately is this is defeated boolean. What happens if we could just toggle is defeated for every elf that spawns on screen? To do this, we can first create a new function which we assign to the variable f. After that, we need to get the key for each of the elves. We can do this by using the object.keys on the all elves object. Then, for each of the keys, we need to grab the corresponding elf and set is defeated to true. Copying this function into the console, we can wait until an elf shows up on screen and then run it to see what happens. We can see this elf no longer throws snowballs or moves towards us, however it doesn't actually play the dying animation. That's because the animations are handled in a different function. You can also see here some WebSocket communications which we could use to improve our cheat and send our defeated elves back to the server. We can get the elves to not throw snowballs at all by tampering with the elf throw delay variable. We can see here in the client side code that in order for an elf to throw a snowball, a certain amount of elapsed time must pass. This is defined by the elf throw delay variable. By setting this to an arbitrarily high number, the elves are no longer able to throw snowballs and we can pick them off easily. And while that's all fun, what I really wanted to do was write an aimbot. And so that's what we set out to do next. Remember that player throw function that we saw earlier? Let's go ahead and trigger that and see what happens. We can see this must be what gets called when we aim and click. Looking at the source code for the player throw function, we can see it takes an optional pointer argument. It then does a few checks to see if the player is already defeated or if there's audio before it jumps into the meat of the function. The first thing it's gonna do is check that optional parameter. If a pointer is not defined, it grabs the mouse pointer object from within the game scene object. After that, it uses a built-in phaser function to calculate the angle from the player to the position of the pointer before it emits a WebSocket communication to initiate the throw. With this new information, we can go ahead and revise our old script. Instead of setting each elves is defeated variable to true, we need to actually take our mouse location and set its x and y coordinates to the elves x and y coordinates. We also need to go ahead and update our throw delay to zero so that we can throw multiple snowballs at once. We can see now that our player throws multiple snowballs to each of the enemy locations. Now, the same bot isn't perfect because it doesn't account for movement, such as in this instance we're still missing players that are moving, but for the most part it gets the job done. This was just a quick video to demonstrate some of the things we can do when we're hacking HTML5 games. While this was a CTF challenge, a lot of the same techniques will still apply. Learning how to use the developer console and read client-side code is a really good strategy to get started writing these cheats. The holiday hack challenge will stay up year-round, and I highly recommend it to anyone interested in security. For more, HTML5 hacking resources, as well as general infosec resources, check out Guided Hacking's website, and I'll see you guys next time.